Today on Midlife Conversations, I've got Dr. Jess Petros, who I just met recently and instantly loved her, instantly loved her, like have to have her in my life, (laughs) have to have her in my life uh, because she is just so awesome with so many things. But she, what I, the reason I wanted to have her on is first of all, she's a medical doctor. She was for years, but she chose, she literally chose to leave the medical traditional system to chase actual root cause issues and answers for her patients, because in the traditional system, she was being locked. She could not do it. She would, every time she'd share what she wanted to, or go after her truth or what she knew or what she was researching, she would get in trouble with the, by somebody. And she said, you know what? Enough. I promise to do no harm, to do no harm. I promise to help patients. I promise to help lead cure, fix, whatever I need to do. And I don't want to be tied to the system anymore. So she chose to leave. So I have a whole new respect for her because she still teaches, she still practices in her own way. And she doesn't know that she wants to go back into the traditional system, but she has a wealth of knowledge. She has an incredible product line that we're going to talk about. But I specifically wanted to have her on today to talk about the three big things that I tend to get questions about lately. Okay. Number one is mold illness, mold. Ill- and I don't know why it's all of a sudden this thing, especially in midlife, it's coming about Lyme disease, which seems to come about a lot more now too. I don't know if it shows up just later in life. And then the third thing that she's also an expert on, which we've had many guests on this before, but I want to dive a little bit into it is breast implant illness. And I think they all have more in common than you think. And we're going to talk all about it. So thank you so much for being here today, Jess. Well, thank you for that wonderful introduction. It was like you were in my head about the traditional system. That was amazing. (laughs) No, we are recording this podcast live, by the way, everyone, just so you know, and that, which means I record it for my live 365 group. And the cool thing about that is, and I've already told Jess ahead of time is people are going to listen in, they're listening in the viewing room. Uh, As we do the interview, they get the real time interview. And then right after that, we pause the recording for the podcast and they're allowed to ask Dr. Jess any question they want. If that's something that interests you, I'm going to talk about that more at the end of the show, but also you can go to midlifeconversations.com forward slash live to figure out how to be part of that. So Jess, thank you for being here. Um, Let's backtrack a little bit. If you don't mind, share a little bit about your journey in medicine and what brought you officially to leaving the traditional side of it. Oh, that's a wild ride right there. Okay. Um, You know, when I was in medical school, I, I, went to school in Kentucky. That's not exactly, you know, an epicenter for holistic health. So I didn't know about chiropractic school or naturopathic doctor school. I just thought medical school is the only way to go and help treat people's bodies to get better. And I drank all the Kool-Aid in medical school, every bit of it. I got my flu shot every year. I ate the cafeteria food. I didn't see anything wrong with it. I believed all the first, I mean, I was discharging people as a hospitalist on like 30, 40 medications. And for a few years, saw nothing wrong with that. And then honestly, what happened is I got on social media Mm -hmm. and people would make these outlandish claims. They would say, you know, things like food can heal you. And I thought, (laughs) what the heck back then? And then I would be humbled. I would go and research what they said and be like, they didn't teach me that in school. What did you even, did you even have a thought of like, well, they sound crazy at first and then, and then, but then you wanted to verify and because you're a researcher. Yeah. You know, if I was going to, you know, counter someone's argument, I had to have a logical scientific counter for them. And most of the time I would swallow my words and, you know, really be, like I said, be humbled because I thought, gosh, you know, what else didn't they teach us in medical school Mm -hmm, here? mm -hmm. Um, And that was sort of, once you crack that foundation, the floodgates eventually open. And I'm the type of person that when I know better, I do better. And I I don't keep my mouth shut for better or for worse for me. And um, I thought, these doctors don't know this. I need to tell them this. And I was excited. And when I started telling them, you know, why why do we have Pepsi and Coke contracts in the hospital? Why do we have you know, processed dairy and GMO soy and things like this for people in the cafeteria that, you know, patients that have cancer. Um, What, how is making someone better equate to discharging them on 50 medications? How is that health? Yeah. And when when I told these doctors, I thought they were going to jump on the bandwagon with me and we were all going to kind of have a revolution. (laughs) Sorry guys, my dog is barking. So, um, so, but I was wrong. I was wrong. That's not what happened at all. In Mm -hmm. fact, they, um, they got mad at me Mm -hmm. and they said, you're no longer allowed to 
practice medicine if you start talking like this to all wow. of us all the time. Um, and the final straw was when I wrote in the patient's chart that, Hey, you know, this patient I admitted is on however many medications and this proton pump inhibitor, which is for acid reflux, mm -hmm. acid reflux medication package insert clearly says no longer than six months to one year on this medication. And this person had been on it eight years. Wow. And I wrote that in the chart and the primary care doctor called the lead hospitalist of my team and said, this doctor is a liability. She's going to get me in trouble because I'm the one that prescribed that for eight years. And so they set me down. Which and she said, wasn't supposed to be doing. <laughs> right. Thank you. And so they set me down and said, if you do this anymore, you can't work for us. Interesting. And I said, I quit. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And so after that, I was propelled on a functional medicine, holistic health journey where, um, I really made a fraction of what I used to make mm -hmm. as a medical doctor in the hospital while I trained and learned a whole new perspective on the body from amazing naturopathic doctors to, you know, a medical doctor that went rogue like me and the rest is history. Once yeah. you see the light and you take that red pill, you can't unsee it. Before you dismiss uh, Dr. Jess, before you uh, say, well, Hey, if she's not practicing anymore and they didn't, they were saying she was going against the board or whatever it is. I just want you to ask yourself the question. If you're listening, why would she want to ruin her reputation, lose her income, literally lose her income and be dismissed by so many peers? Why would she want to take that on? If there wasn't like a real truth behind that, like a real truth behind that, I just want, because it's so, I watch you get slammed. I've watched you get slammed, Jess, and I don't know how you do it. I watch people dismiss and slam and I'm thinking, they're not even asking you wouldn't, why would someone voluntarily do that? You would not, you would not say I voluntarily want to just make stuff up and just create trauma. You really, I, that's why I have such mad respect for you because you really thought I'm want to share the truth on things. And I don't want to be locked into a system. So, so much respect. I know that you live in Florida. Now you actually left California because what happened in California? Oh boy, California. I loved California. It just didn't love me back. Um, and unfortunately in California, they had, they passed a law back in 2017, 18. And the final rendition of it was SB 276, which means by law, they can, the Health and Human Services Department can subpoena patients' medical records. So they brought the legal department in on this, mm -hmm. the attorney, the surgeon generals, attorney generals, and they can come in and request patients' information, open them up without the patient knowing that they're doing this, mm -hmm. um, which really is, it just feels icky. I would it imagine that's a HIPAA violation too. Seriously, how is this allowed? And um, then they, you know, look and see um, if they can get us in trouble. It actually is a witch hunt. There's been hundreds of doctors that have gotten in trouble this way, including Bob Sears and Kelly Sutton. And um, they really only allow anaphylaxis now for a vaccine exemption in California. And um, unfortunately, there are a lot of fragile children who cannot handle 72 doses of vaccines before the age of 18. And yes, everyone listening, if you did not know that the CDC recommended schedule is 72 doses of vaccines, not exactly individual doses, but multi-dose vaccines or vials. In a syringe, you've got a lot, right? Is that Correct. my understanding? Okay. Correct. And, you know, I maybe we maybe got 15, chill, you know, like we didn't yeah. get anywhere close to that load. And they're... Now people are so much sicker because their environment is so much more toxic that there are these children that really are maimed from this and they cannot handle this. And the California Medical Board's reason for doing this is if any doctor got in trouble under disciplinary action, that nulled every vaccine exemption we've done ever in the history for fragile children. So wow. all these families who lived in California, whose children, you know, maybe they had an autistic brother or sister, maybe they had an autoimmune condition. They now lost their exemption and had, couldn't go to public school until they got all doses caught up at once. Wow. <laughs> oh, this, so to me, like I, you know, what, whoever's listening, whatever you feel about vaccines, I'm not trying to sway you in or out and, or any of that. And by the way, I didn't know what I know. And my daughter has all, I got her every vaccine as a kid. Like I didn't know, I thought it was like ours, but I just take a minute to just imagine if you really do have a child that was vaccine injured, or you have a sibling of a new child that's vaccine injured. And now you have a real reason why you don't want to vaccinate your child. And I'm not talking about the recent vaccine that everyone's talking about. I'm talking about like, you're a baby, you go to the pediatrician, all this is happening. And you go to your doctor, Jess was your doctor who hears you is compassionate and is helping you. And now this is becoming a liability all the way around. Yeah. And unfortunately now 
The doctors are so scared in California, you can't get a vaccine exemption. If they have done five or more vaccine exemptions, the board has passed a law that they now automatically open up an investigation wow. on you. And, and doctors are terrified. You know, of this course. is their livelihood that we still owe thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in school loans, a lot of us. And so they they can't step out any longer because of these laws they passed in California. Yes. I also want to share that Jess was an actual MD. Like she literally like was working in the hospital setting. This is not like she had a certification. She's calling like she really is, was in the system. She left it. I have a lot of respect for you, Jess, for taking that stand. I admire that in you. I don't know that I'd have the courage. I'm just being real. So I just give you a a lot of acknowledgement there. That right. being said, she is completely qualified to share what she is teaching. If you're triggered by what I shared earlier, I wanted to share it up front and right away, just so you know why I choose to interview her, why I have a lot of respect for her, why I would continue to go to her for advice. I know darn well, if I had something wrong with me and we couldn't figure it out, I, you'd be the one I'm calling. You're so knowledgeable and you just, you tell the truth, which is yeah. you have no agenda. And I have so much respect for you around that. Thank so you. let's talk a little bit about these kind of specialties that you've jumped into. Why did this become important to, to you? And let's start with mold. Yes. So, you know, it was important to me because what I think that breaks my heart the most out of everything in the world is when people are chronically ill with mystery symptoms, they've been gaslit, they can't find answers, and no one has spent the time with them to hear them out hear their stories, why they might be sick, and then help them troubleshoot and understand their bodies. And for me, um, if I really want to help people, and especially things that most of the time are, are preventable, mm -hmm. are preventable, and I want people to know their body isn't broken, it's the environment. So I decided to ask why until I couldn't ask why anymore. Why do you have high blood pressure? Why can't you, you know, why does your left leg hurt? Why do you have high cholesterol? Um, why do you have palpitations? And when I kept asking why until there was no more whys to ask, well, what it led me to were chronic stealth infections, stealth toxicities, mm -hmm. heavy metals, man-made industrial toxins. And mold, for example, is one of those stealth pathogens. Um, Lyme is another one. Epstein-Barr virus is another one. And, um, you know, anything man-made that's put inside the body also can yeah. cause a big problem. And, and I wanted to find answers for these mystery people who literally have no hope sometimes, mm. and they've given up on their bodies and they think they're broken. And to me, that's the most heartbreaking thing. Yeah, it is. And, and unfortunately in traditional, a lot of traditional medicine, you go in, um, and you say these symptoms they're giving you, it's just looking for the prescription, not the why. So why do you think so much of this is on the uprise? Oh, good question. Um, okay. So I will be the first to say that um, I don't often blame the pathogen or the body. I blame the environment that the body is put in. And pathogens out in the ecosystem, let's say mold, for example, it digests organic waste. Bacteria digest organic waste. That's what they do. And so if you're full of waste, let's say your food in your gut isn't digesting, it's putrefying. Let's say you're full of heavy metals or man-made toxins. Guess what? Those pathogens will come there to digest and take care of that in your body. Um, and, you know, for example, the red tide only comes out mostly when there's oil spills maggots will clean a dirty wound. Mm. So there are pathogens there in the ecosystem and we are part of that ecosystem. We can't get away. So if you're full of these toxins and trauma, you'll have pathogens. For example, in fish cestos, the studies show that the fish can hold six times more of the heavy metals than you would anticipate because uh, parasites are digesting the metals and holding them inside the fish bodies. So the same thing likely happens with humans. And so the best way to avoid this uptick of these things you're seeing is to live as close mm -hmm. to earth as possible with natural resources, eat organic, and really avoid these toxins, even though they're somewhat unavoidable in today's society. Um, and you can only control what you can control. Um, and I'll say one more thing about mold. Mm -hmm. Mold has been around for eons and centuries. It's not mold's fault. It's the modern day building practices of houses. Yeah, this was my big question because that's the thing. It seems like every time I turn around, someone has mold poisoning. It's like it's like the the trendy thing now. It's like mold. And I, heck, we had a house that had black mold. But that's my question. Like mold is not new. It's been around. And like and when I go travel outside of the U.S., by the way, I was just in Portugal and Spain, and those buildings are old. Like they are old. Like you you look at them, you know there's mold. So why is not everybody talking about you know mold? And why all of a sudden have mostly Americans started saying mold is causing my problems? And what do we actually do about it? And how much is actually like serious? What do we need to worry about here? 
So one thing that I want to drive home for people is it's not a certain toxin or this one lab on your labs that are going to make or break your health. It's the body is tipped out of stasis, homeostasis or normalcy. And a lot of times there are two reasons people you're seeing more mold illness. The first one I mentioned modern day building practices, and I'll go back to that in a okay. moment. The second one is nervous system dysregulation. And this is such a big one, especially in Western countries like the US. We are much more stressed out than European countries. And, you know, we work some of us 50, 70 hours a week. We don't like our jobs. We don't like our families. We don't have friends or a community anymore. And we don't know how to get into rest and digest or parasympathetic mode. This sounds like not that big a deal, but it's completely been underrated. When you are out, out of normalcy and into fight or fight, not rest and digest, your hormones release different. Your neurotransmitters release different. Your neuropeptides, your blood sugar, your cortisol, everything gets pulled out of homeostasis. And then if you're exposed, to something like a moldy building, you are a sitting duck because your nervous system is out of balance. And this is an opportunity for a pathogen or a mycotoxin to make your body its home because you are more hospitable. Wow. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. But what's interesting is that if you're that personality, which I'm sure I am, you're that <laughs> personality. And now you're in this environment that that happens, then you get more stress now knowing it. So what do you, how do you break this? It is a vicious cycle. You hit the nail on the head when you said that. Um, mold is the OG of cytokine storms way before 2020. And um, it literally releases things that cause lower endorphins, lower melatonin. And it, it exacerbates that nervous system dysregulation, makes you even more anxious. And when you have mold in your house, your body's so smart, it knows not to take deep breaths. So you'll inhale those mycotoxin spores. So you breathe shallowly, which induces panic and anxiety even yeah. more so. So I always tell people avoidance is key in environmental medicine, but it's easy for me to say that. <laughs> it's easy for me to say some people can't leave their home. And so your body is kind of smart. It's peaked on purpose because it sees a threat. So really, mm -hmm. if you can't get out of the house, I try to work with nervous system reset programs with them and breath work and things like that. But sometimes people their genes or their past exposures, don't let them really get on top of it until they finally can get out of the exposure. And that's, that's hard. But if somebody gets their nervous system under control mm -hmm. and they're in the environment, you think that that actually they could be healed from it just from I that alone. Do. I okay. do. Um, yes. Some people's bodies don't recognize things like mold spores as well, even though it's a threat, they don't recognize like pathogen proteins as well. So they get stuck in their body. They can't release them as well. Um, but that also doesn't have to do just with genes. It has to do with nervous system. How are you going to release a mold spore when you can't release the thought? Wow. Doesn't okay. happen. Yeah, so yes. I never really, I never really thought about that. So what would you tell somebody that's navigating that specific thing? Like that's, that's definitely me. I can think of a few other people. Um, how, cause just someone, someone says just calm down or relax or just go meditate. It doesn't, that doesn't really register for, for, for that personality. What, how, what's the interruption? What do you do? This is the hardest part of my job. You know, think about how hard it is to change yourself and your, your daily ingrained habits. And you're asking someone else to change. That yeah. you don't live with. It's extremely the hardest. It's definitely the hardest part of my job. So, you know, everyone's a little different and there's not like a, you know, a hard black and white recipe I can give every single person that will work for them. Okay. Um, but it's mainly about the thought patterns and you have to almost become the observer of your thoughts. Um, you have to look, most people think the same, you know, 80,000 thoughts a day, 90% are the same the day, at, the day before that, the mm -hmm. day before that, the day before that. So you can't manifest from a place of the same thought patterns every day. And I will tell you, the longer I go in my career, the rigid people that can't get in the flow state that are type A, those are the people that are at risk for chronic health problems because of the nervous system dysregulation I just talked about. So it's almost like, you really have to break the habit of being yourself as Joe Dispenza so, would say. This is so wild because, okay, so type A personality, you have, this is me to a T and many of my listeners, I'm sure <laughs> you have a diagnosis, you find out, okay, mold. So, and then you go into fix mode, fix mode. You know, I will move. I will take a million supplements. I will do this. I will do that. I will control <laughs> this. And it sounds like you're just creating a bigger problem. 
you know what? Yeah. Sometimes you have to really get to know your patient or your client well, because sometimes if you give people a whole list of to do things, man, you created a monster. Yeah. Um, we'll do them. <laughs> yeah. And that's great. That's great. I mean, that's a great patient, but the doctor also needs to be aware of the fact that there's a, it's an art and there's a, there's a, a place where you need to get them into a, a flow state, a peace of mind, a trust in the unknown. Things are coming, a trust in something you can't see that's greater than you, that's got you. And okay. you kind of let go and know that no matter what happens, it's for your greatest good. Even if it sucks in the moment, you can't see your way out. Um, you t- I you t- hear you, Jess. I see your <laughs> lips moving. I know that you're correct. <laughs> My, I'm not comprehending. I'm just being real. I know. I know. It's just, it's, this is a whole thing. I think you're onto something here. And I think this is an important conversation. And some people listening fully get it. They're into, you know, they're doing all the right things here. But I even see some people that like, they do their breath work and they do their meditation. Like they spend hours on their day doing those things. And that to me is still your type A all that stuff. You're right. And they don't see the forest for the trees. And it's like, I need people to understand that you're a human being, not a human doing. And it's, um, it's really difficult when you have like a boss babe, like yourself, yeah. you know, we're, 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 da, 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 da. we get things done. We're successful. And sometimes they need to know that you can manifest the same success in the silence and the stillness, just like you can the doing. And in Western countries, we, that is foreign. That is a okay. mystery to us. So you know, it's interesting. I'm recording this the day after she literally just got back from Joe Dispenza for a week. So I can, it's in you. I can, I can feel it. You're like in the being mode, which is great. I love it. I was going to say, if you really want to know, go to Joe and he will rewire your brain. (laughs) Yeah. He is great. And I know you've done a lot of work with him. Talk to me about like, okay, I'm still going to ask a doing question though, because I have to like, what? there's so many different ways you can deal with mold protocols. And now I'm going to tell you with me, Uh, I was not sick from living in black mold. I had other things going on. So I think it was contributing and helping, Mm -hmm. but I didn't feel anything. My husband really felt the mold stuff. Like he really felt it. But when we left uh, the house, we both wanted to do like a whole detox protocol. I started down the road of a whole bunch of supplements for it. And it made me feel like absolute crap. And I said, no way I'm not doing it. I tossed them all. And I did something called an Ibu machine. Have you heard of that? Oh yeah. I did like five treatments of it. Uh, shout out to Dr. Sheree Ong in Scottsdale, Arizona. That's who I, where I went, but they, uh, it basically like pulls your blood out one side. It filters it. It puts, um, oxygen back in it and then it puts you back in. So, and it worked for me. Like, I feel like it cleared everything out. It was awesome. I understand that's not like realistic for a lot of people. So I want to get your opinion. Like, why did that work? Do the supplement things work? What do you tell patients besides your, you know, you got to be different, which I'm not dismissing. I'm just asking an (laughs) add on question. You know, sometimes though, when you take the supplements, it helps calm your nervous system because you're getting rid of the toxin that your body sees as a foreign intruder. So sometimes it kind of happens naturally when you okay. do that. So, Got it. Okay. Ibu guys, extracorporeal blood oxygen, blood oxygenation with ozone, E-B-O-O. And Ibu is amazing because mm-hmm. it's like dialysis of the blood I loved it. with ozone. And, you know, a lot of people out there are like, oh, I got ozone and it made me have healing detox reactions because it's a killer. It's a kill thing. Ozone mm-hmm. kills pathogens because they mm-hmm. can't live in high oxygen. But the thing about Ibu is it filters out everything. So you don't have those Herxheimer or healing detox. No, I was reactions. amazing. I felt like take on the world right after. It was awesome. <laughs> so what Natalie did that helped so much is she oxygenated her body. Ozone is a molecule. It's oxygen, three oxygens, O3. And you know, O2 is regular oxygen. So when it goes into the body, it mm-hmm. forms O2, an oxygen radical that then turns into hydrogen peroxide. And we give hydrogen peroxide IVs to kill viruses. Wow. So this is a major killer. Not only providing oxygenation, with which prevents cancer, prevent, pre- prevents so many different pathogens from being able to attack, it forms hydrogen peroxide, which kills them too. Your body naturally makes in the white blood cells anyway. Yeah. And so, and so it's I love ozone. I've been trained in it. I love it so much. And I would never send anyone to go get it until their drainage was open, unless mm-hmm. it was Ibu. Okay. Good to know. And when yeah. drain, with drainage opening, by the way, I had done all the drainage opening is kind of when we've had like Laura on before you all that have been avid listeners. It's like a way to get all of your energy up, open drainage pathways before you try to go kill off something. And this is for parasites too, gut health. I, this is what I've learned at least for mold, for anything you're trying to kill off. When you take someone through a mold detox protocol, are you doing a heavy amount of supplements? You concentrate on this other stuff first that you're talking about with the mindset. Is it a, like, what do you do? 
You know, it's, that's a great question. So I always start, no matter what people are diagnosed with, I always start with drainage with them. I always, 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 I don't care if it's autoimmunity, hormonal issue, cancer, whatever it is. Usually people are sick because something's stuck inside their body that doesn't belong there. But again, I want people to be in homeostasis before I do any sort of detox and nervous system dysregulation ain't homeostasis. I'm telling you what, no protocol will, Mm -mm. will stick until you regulate your nervous system. None of them. So I always start that with drainage with people because and what kind of when you say drainage what does that mean to people like they're going to be like what what do you mean yeah absolutely so bowels do you guys poop one to three times per day yeah you have to poop poop. everyone knows that you have to poop now they've heard this on the mic show before (laughs) it's not okay to not go other than like once a week that's all dead stuff growing in you in your intestines yeah, guys. And all those toxins irritate your brain up the gut brain. Axis. I don't know how you don't have brain fog. Yeah. yeah. So pooping and you know, want to make sure that it's not like falling apart in the toilet with ragged edges. Sorry for the TMI guys, but that's inflammation <laughs> that indicates inflammation. Falling in apart in the toilet with too many edges. Okay. I'm ragged, to edges. <laughs> ragged edges, ragged okay. edges. That's total inflammation. Okay. Um, and then, you know, besides that, I want to make sure you don't see undigested food in your stool. That's bile. I want to make sure that, you know, can you handle, if you drink, can you handle alcohol, a couple of drinks? Do you have a horrible hangover for two days? Can you handle caffeine? Are you like a tweaker whenever I give it to you? This is the liver. You know, can you sweat? If I put you in a sauna, can you sweat within like 10, 15 minutes in a sauna? Okay. That's really Some people important. can't sweat. So they're not detoxing at all. Like your body's. So all these opposite things you're saying, your body is not opened up. It is not detoxing. Yeah. And then if I give you something like say, let's say you do an ozone IV, let's say I give you, you know, some oil of oregano and garlic, we're going to kill a bunch of stuff off and then you, you can't poop it out. You can't sweat it out. Guess mm. what? You won't even want to talk to me again because you'll feel so bad. Like that's what we doctor start patient relationship. Cut. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So it helps people have compliance with the protocol. So if I'm hearing you correctly, one of the first easiest things you can do is get yourself pooping. So what, even if you need some support there, I would imagine, how and do you sleeping. feel about taking things like, um, I've recommended this before to my audience and, uh, it, it didn't come from me. It came from um, my gut health expert that I've had on, but that, uh, that magnesium you can get, you can get it on, literally on Amazon. It's the, um, I forgot what it's called. It's like ozonated ox of uh, magnesium. Oh, yeah. Oxy Mag- Mago seven or oxy powder. Yes. Yeah. So I love it. I love it. Um, there are some people who tell me though, oh gosh, there's no like happy medium. I either take some and I don't go or I take it's ex- it can be explosive. <laughs> yes. And, it, and yeah. then I have, I'm in the bathroom all day. So, um, well, the bottle says don't take seven. It says f- up to four. So <laughs> don't take seven or you will have an explosion. No guys. And even four, for some people, everyone is so bio-individual and different. You have to find your own recipe and play around with your body and get to know your body. So a Pro tip for everyone listening out there. If you can't go to the bathroom and poop, if you can't, chances are you're stuck in flight or fight because it's opposite of rest and digest, which helps you Mm -hmm. poop. The other thing is um, sometimes people who have bloating and digestive issues and constipation, they can't digest capsules. So even the, the oxygen ozonated magnesium. So sometimes I'll, leave, I'll have them open the capsules up and put them in applesauce or juice and take it that way. Wow. That way I can guarantee that you're absorbing all those expensive capsules you're, you're buying. Some of those capsules have gelatin and fillers and a lot of those a day on your gut is really hard. So before I move into Lyme and some of the other questions I have for you, just to kind of wrap this in a, ni- a nice bow. If you've had mold exposure and you know you've got like mold as an issue, if you were to kind of give someone a little checklist, this is a very type A question of me, by the way, Jeff, as you can <laughs> as you could see. But if you're gonna give somebody kind of like a check order of like, here are the five things you must do, or I would have you look at, what would you tell them? Yes, absolutely. So um This is such a big one for people with mold and Lyme. And you guys, they kind of run together. It's called biotoxin illness, the Mm -hmm. umbrella term overhead. So number one, nervous system. And we talked about that. Number two, drainage to put your body, make it ready for the detox. And the third one is teeth. What about teeth? Oh my gosh. I can't even tell you how many people can't get rid of Lyme disease because they have root canals and mercury fillings. Mm. And um, mold too. It's a, it's called known in biological medicine from Germany and Switzerland as an interference. Okay. And- let's talk. I wasn't going to ask you about this, but let's talk about that for a minute. So I just recently de- went down the road of removing old amalgam fillings, probably because I met you and then it was in my head. Um, <laughs> so I removed old and I should have had those out. Um, 
what about, okay, I'm on board with not getting a root canal. I'm totally clear on not getting a root canal. And I'm also on board with everyone checking their root canals to make sure there's no infection. But what if you've literally had a root canal, there's zero infection and you're hearing from like, this is my case, but this is also, um, others that I've talked to mm-hmm. where you're hearing, like, you're going to create a bigger issue removing it. Cause it was literally, if, if they were done pro- and I know it's a small percentage, but if it was done properly by an endodontist, talk yes. to us about that. Be the so, truth teller. You know- there are some endodontists who, who do a really good job if no one needs a root canal, but if you decide you want to do that rather than pull the tooth, um, there is, sorry, there is, um, there is some ways to, Ariel, can you grab him? Put him outside. Okay. So there are some ways to, um, actually fix this. So some endodontists will use something called PRP platelet rich mm-hmm. plasma that they draw from your blood. They spin it down and they help get the infection out of there. They use ozone there before they do yep. the root canal. And the key there is really, really cleaning out the infection before you pack it and seal it, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and many people don't understand that. Um, and some of the regular conventional endodontists or dentists are using synthetic material, which is not, got a, is that what got a purchase? Yes. Okay. So Yes. And so, and so, on top so of- I'm, I'm, I'm hearing to like, make sure one, if you are, well, I wouldn't even recommend getting a root canal period. Now at this point, there's too yeah. many other options like an implant or whatever else, but if you're going to have one, make sure it's an endodontist, not a general dentist doing it. Right. They're a little more trained and this is their specialized area, their niche. Right. So I, I, you know, I really love that and try and find one that's a little more maybe holistically or integratively based. So they understand this stuff. The other thing is, you know, if there's no infection whatsoever, I I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't do that to someone because guess what? Besides it being a risk, it's really expensive. It's Mm -hmm. so expensive. And I don't have a right, a good answer for people for that. Functional dentistry is expensive, but, um, you know, I will give a disclaimer with this. Some people, when they come to me and they say, there's no infection, I have to further dig around and ask questions because I'll say, did you get a comb beam scan? Yes. So them say yes, just like you did. And mm-hmm. then I'll say, who read it? Was it mm-hmm. a holistic dentist? Radiologist. Who's... Oh. Yeah. Is that good or not good? I don't know. I don't like it off the bat. And I'll tell you why. Tell me why. It's kind of like a regular doctor reading scans who or regular dentist reading scans who doesn't believe root canals, anything is wrong with them does this radiologist have the perspective or has he looked at scans that where there has been infected root canals? Does he have, so I'll tell you in my case and probably some listeners cases that I've talked to about this before. Um, so I go to a holistic biological dentist. So they routinely check this, um, which is what I suggest. If you do have a root canal, your regular general dentist is not going to tell you to touch it. They're going to tell you why you should leave it. It's good. Your endodontist will tell you to leave it. If you go to a holistic or a biological dentist, they will tell you to check them and make sure there's no infection. I'll tell you in the case of my personal biological dentist out here, she not only does it herself and looks, but she has a radiologist that's on board. Like they want you to remove your root canals. Like they're looking to remove your root canals. Um, and with mine, she even said, leave it alone right now. It's too close to my sinus. She said, you, we just check it every year and make sure you've had it for like literally 30 years, leave it alone. So, so I don't know. I'm, I'm open to other opinions, but I want to, I want to help with this. I have actually had another dentist on my podcast recently because I, there's a lot of people asking these questions. They, they watch, you know, that documentary about root Root canals, they get scared. And I think people, a lot of people are removing them, which could be great and life-saving, but it also could create unnecessary problems if you don't need to have it removed. You know, yeah, because there's not, implants are not without risk. They're putting, you know, a porcelain ceramic implant or a zircon, excuse me, a zirconia implant in here and in the bone. And not everyone is going to accept a yes. zirconia implant, even though it's inert and safe, safer than a root canal. It's not for everyone. And so, so really, I, I just want to ask people, make sure that you've got someone reading your cone beam scan that is used to reading them and seeing that root canals can be a problem because if they have not read them or think they're not a problem, mm-hmm. they're going to miss your infection. And for you, I would say maybe get a second opinion. Yeah. You know, Dr. Blodgett in Portland, he has a service where you can upload it on his site and he reads it for you. And he's my That's friend. Awesome. Yeah. So like, you know, it doesn't hurt just to get a second opinion on it, just to make sure it's trained so eye. things out. And I think everyone that has dental work like that should get these things checked out. Um, amalgam fillings, if you still have those, those really do need to go. I think 
that's, there's a lot of issues with that. Yes. Um, and then anytime you have a tooth that's hurting or an infection, I worked in dental, by the way, I'm not a doctor like Jess, but I did work in dental for a number of years. And I will say anytime you have an infection or a pain or whatever, you've got to deal with it, or you will create other health issues. That's right. You guys. And the teeth are like, we call the feet a human homunculus. So every part in your foot, this is like the shoulder, this is the gut, you know, there's, and the teeth are the same way. Each tooth represents an organ system and um, it's on a meridian and each tooth has a, a nerve that goes from that tooth all the way to the cranial canal that viruses mm. can transverse your thyroid is right here so if you have problems with your thyroid make sure you don't have metal fillings because every wow. time you eat or drink something hot it leaches a vapor a vapor leaches and so that's wild i would have not known that okay that's why that's important okay so yeah Biotoxin overload. Is that what you called it? So your nervous system, you want to check that, go to Joe Dispenza, meditate, whatever you need to do. I'm I'm right there with you all trying to figure this out. Like I am yeah. not, this is this is definitely <laughs> I get to work on this. Um, Hard. <laughs> open pathways. I got that part mastered. I that so definitely open things that I've shared with you all about, like the sauna, the red light, um, even it, like just the supplements that I've recommended, all that stuff is designed to help you with that. And then there's things that are literally free, like grounding, like walking barefoot on grass, getting some real sun. Like there's things that you can do, like being connected to nature is so important. Yes. Um, and then teeth didn't think to mention that, but yes, definitely looking at that. Let's talk about Lyme disease for a minute, because I think a lot of the symptoms with mold are interchangeable with Lyme and same with breast implant illness. Like those three seem to present as very similar things. Bingo. Yes. So, and oftentimes in conjunction with pe for people, and that's because breast implants can grow mold and they often do. Mm -hmm. I mean, my friend, Angie Lee, who's very, very um, outspoken about her breast implant illness, she had mold growing in them. My friend Bianca yep. did too. Um, and so that can be the source of your mold. Wow. Everyone thinks of a water damaged house. What if it's inside your body? Wow. And so that's why the symptoms are presenting the same, maybe. Exactly. Too. Exactly. And if you have Lyme disease, God forbid, knock on wood and chronic Lyme, your immune system has been lowered. Same with mold. So if you're exposed to Lyme and you have mold, you're kind of a sitting duck and vice versa. Mm. Um, and the, the symptoms are- And is very Lyme only from a tick biting you? Because that seems so like out there. Not at all. Like that so happened at camp when yeah. I was 12, but it's yeah. like not- not at all. It's not. No, there are many vectors. Actually, there's German studies that are now published that shows that a tick um, can or excuse me, Burger Burger um, which is Lyme disease, Borrelia burgdorferi can can uh, survive from a mosquito larva into a full grown mosquito. Um, and so now mosquitoes can carry Lyme disease as okay, well. That's scary. And we get bit who remembers a, lot. a mosquito bite? Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm like a magnet for them. I think O positive blood attracts them like a magnet for some reason. That's me. Exactly. Um, exactly. what about, okay, this is, I'm going to ask about breast implant illness in a minute, but I want to ask, I'm going to ask about alopecia because I have someone very close to me that's navigating that right now. And I know that that can come on from all those things that we've talked about. What do you know about that? Alopecia, man, that's a hard one too, because they don't give the people who are diagnosed, I'm sure is, do you know if it's alopecia areata? Do you know which kind um, it is? That I don't know. Okay. Um, and if you guys don't know what alopecia is, it's hair loss. Um, it can affect just the scalp or it can be really the whole body. And sometimes depending on the cause, it can be permanent or it can be more temporary. And there's a lot of reasons for it. Anything from hormonal stuff to stress to genetic I, I'm not going to say it's all genes, but it's just a little bit of a propensity that can be activated. Right. And so the stress and trauma is a big one with hair mm -hmm. loss. It's so big. Um, and you know, if you guys have something that's attacking the hair follicle and your body sees that as a foreign intruder, it's going to release the hair to yeah. protect you. So I would do with this person, I would be going full bore, you know, with functional testing, especially the gut especially, okay. um, she's doing like a lot of that, the person heavy metals, of. mycotoxins and environmental toxins, and then really looking at the nervous system at the same time you're doing this for this person. Um, and there could be a lot of reasons. And I'm not going to say that, you know, every single person has the exact same reason. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they don't necessarily, there's a multitude of reasons. So I'd love to like get a hold of her or him and ask them some questions. Yeah. But in general, um, I would say that there is, did anything, let me just, let me just show people how I work here. Did anything large in her, her, or his life happen before this diagnosis? Yes. Okay. Like yeah. something stressful. So you think so that has a big impact, I believe with those types of things. Okay. 
thousand percent. And I'm not just asking this for her. I've had definitely people bring up that before with alopecia. And I think some people are confused on what alopecia is because sometimes women are just like, I'm getting alopecia and menopause. I'm like, no, you're just getting thinning hair. That's a different thing than like you're losing your hair. Like it's a whole different situation. Exactly. And I, if you don't mind, I will, I will just show you really, really quickly here. Let me see if I can. Um, Oh, I don't know if I can. I was going to, I was going to share my screen, but I, yeah, I can make it. Safe. I, yeah. Let me, here we go. Okay. Perfect. So if you guys are watching this on YouTube or in the membership site, you can see. Yeah. This so screen. this is my membership wellness plus. And what I did was I typed alopecia in the search bar right here. And this is what came up and I, I came, I click on this and it's going to take me just a second. It's going to take me right here when I click on that. And so this is one of our, we have about 300 of these quickies, we call them. And you can see, we give the definition of it. We give, um, is this people can find this on your website or is this, if they're in your membership or where is, is my this? membership in your membership? Plus. Okay. And so you can see root cause reasons for both conditions are very similar. And you can see, I wanted to show people here what, what we've done some research on. It's me and three other doctors that do the research for this. So you can see scalp and follicular inflammation. So where's that coming from? Right. Sometimes yep. mold candida in the cranial cavity and the sinus cavity can do okay. this parasites so because hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin are standard treatments for this. Wow. You know, Lyme disease, you know, heavy metals, um, mercury. And then if you have all the things, then it's such a whole storm of likelihood. Exactly. Mycoplasma. They're living in water damaged home and high oxalates have been connected. So you can see all of this. There's some part of this histamine reactions can come from Lyme or mold, right? So there's some part of this and, and probably a combination that's happening with your friend that needs to be triaged. And see, here's some solutions. Here's the conventional treatments we have, which a lot of people don't want to go that direction. But you know what? As long as you're inform in informed properly, it's your decision. That's amazing. Holistic treatments, right? See, um, I like, this is what I love about you, Jess. Like this is like, and this is just one topic we're talking about, but this is how I wish doctors would practice, like become a detective yes. like this. Yes. And like, so, because to me, we just lost that. And I'm not saying all doctors, so don't come after me. If you love your doctor, or you are a doctor listening. I'm not <laughs> saying all doctors at all. No. Um, but I'm, but unfortunately there's too many, there's too many. And I don't like, it makes me sad that you ask these real questions to help people. And then you, ha they come after you. Yeah. You know, it's, um, what's wrong with being open-minded instead of just giving someone a corticosteroid, what's wrong with asking deeper questions to find out about their life, yeah. you know, on average, especially cause I was a hospitalist. So, um, in the hospital, we didn't have a lot of time and we admitted a lot of patients we had along with the primary care doctors on average, eight to 10 minutes to okay. spend with the patient. Like I can't, I can't figure out all those things on that form. I just showed you about alopecia to know what's going on with that person. Then my only option is to say, here's the conventional treatment. I'm going to ask a question that is not going to be liked by some people. And I'm sure somebody's going to come after me for this, but I don't care. I'm asking it anyway. And I like, I literally don't care anyone listening. If you got the, the vaccine in the last few years or not, like, I don't, that's not, that's your business. It's not mine, That's right. but I do believe that some people that got it are having a very bad reaction to it. Um, and I'm scared that their doctors are not bringing this up or looking at it. Can yes. you, is there anything you're open to sharing about that? I just want people to, cause I'm asking this question not to judge anyone. It's really just, I want people to have information. I'm a truth seeker with things. Like I want people to have information and I just want people to be equipped with where they can get information. I love this question. Actually. I love it because I'm, I want, I don't want to be dis divisive. I want to bring all of us together so that we can see um, the truth, no matter what we believe as, from an objective point. And that's my goal here, not to alienate any of you guys because of your belief system. I chose not to get the vaccine and I didn't tell patients not to get it, but I gave them heavy informed consent because I felt like many of the doctors are pushing it on the patients and not giving them informed consent. And I made it my job to be sure to do that. It's your decision what, no matter what medical procedure you get, I, my problem is when you're not told the risk, that's my problem. And so many people were not told the risk by their doctor and that's not okay. That's not okay. And unfortunately I do feel like people are having vaccine injuries and, and va vaccine reactions. And that's because we've sh now shown through studies that this vaccine makes you a spike protein making factory and it leaves the spike protein does leave the site of injection and does harbor in the reproductive organs. And we had hundreds and thousands of women complaining of their cycles being missed or, or off track or migraine headaches or feeling fatigue after they were around people who are vaccinated. Now, that sounds crazy. 
right? That sounds good. You were sick and your period changed because you're around people who are vaccinated. You weren't yeah, even explain vaccinated. that because I don't really fully understand that part. No, like, I didn't understand that. Doctors gaslit patients and I didn't get it at first either. But you know what? It's, I'm not going to gas. I'm not going to say what you feel is wrong. Who am I? That's wrong. If you're a doctor and you do that, I'm sorry. Like, why don't you listen to your patient instead of assuming they're wrong? Maybe our science is flawed. So if somebody got, so I think there's a lot of people that had it that have nothing. They feel they they feel great. They're, they don't regret. They're amazing. But if somebody is concerned that something they're experiencing is related to that, what advice do you have for them? Because unfortunately it's still such a controversial topic. And I hesitated asking because I try to stay out of controversy. But when I think of like the bigger picture my job is to help midlife women. And I, that means information in all directions. So that's why I'm asking this. So what, if someone has even a glimpse of thought that that may be their cause, like what do they do? It's so hard, you guys. So there are a few things that you can do. And um, one of the things that you can do is start by getting something like a vitamin IV, like a Myers cocktail. And I say this because when someone's so inflamed and their body is really circling and circling, it can't kind of pull itself out of the problem. Sometimes the gut doesn't absorb well, and you can't assimilate whatever you're eating. And so putting something like B vitamins, glutathione, vitamin C in a vein bypasses the gut and lets you get those nutrients that helps put your body in homeostasis so you can fight. I also really love opening drainage for this, a vaccine injury, just like we talked about. There's something in your body that doesn't belong there. How do we get it out? We open you up so your natural drainage pathways that God gave you can help heal you. The other thing I use are binders. And it depends on the person and what kind of binder I use, but binders are these molecularly sticky substances that help pull things out of, and they come out the sweat or the, out the bowels. And so I like to really kill things off, bind them up, like mop them up and then sweat them out with people. And that's a great way to help people feel better too. Um, and I wanted to go back really quick when mm -hmm. you said, how are people feeling poorly when they didn't get vaccinated? And what I'm going to show people right here is a couple studies. So this one, evidence of leaky protection following COVID-19 vaccine and incarcerated population. There's more here, leaky vaccines. So this is vaccines that when you get them, they shed on other people. And that's what wow. this is showing here. So, so there are vaccines that are leaky that you can actually, the shedding was true. This has been proven in studies now. And so if you were one of those people who felt weird around people who got vaccinated, I am not the person to gaslight you. I'm the person to listen yeah. to you. So. I don't put anything out. You know, that's always been a frustration to me when someone has a symptom of something, whatever it is, we can be talking about anything like breast implants. I went through this, you know, we're moving mine. And people will say, well, I didn't have any problems with mine. Well, that's great that you did it, but that doesn't mean everybody doesn't have problems with it. It's just like, it's the same as with food, Jess, honestly, like some people yes. react different to sugar. Some people don't feel it. My husband can eat whatever the heck he wants and like nothing changes. I don't get it. He's a Are freaking you sure you're not a doctor? Are you sure? Because that was really good. Most <laughs> doctors don't even know that. That's really good. That's right. Every, you are so different than your neighbor. Don't judge your neighbor <laughs> because you don't want to be judged either. Yeah, because your I think we're all... Different. But so I think my big, my big reason I wanted to have you on, if nothing else, like you just have so much knowledge and I'm so grateful for all the things you're teaching, but I feel like you should be an example for what we need to look for in the clinicians we're working with, because you. you, to me, I think we've gotten in this habit of letting insurance dictate our treatment, like being used to the five minute appointment. But like, to me, it's so much worth the time and money. If you can do it, like to find that one doctor that, that is actually going to take you seriously and listen to you and become a detective with you. And if the, you don't have the doctor that's going to do that, unfortunately you have to be the te detective yourself. You have to be, because I don't trust the system anymore. And I, n again, not all doctors are bad. There's many amazing ones, but unfortunately too many are like where you were where you're just taught stuff, you think you're doing your job and you're questioned for thinking outside the box. And listen, there have been doctors in the last two, three years that went to school with me in Kentucky and they're still in Kentucky. And they message me on social media and say, something's wrong. The studies don't add mm. up. I can't, I can't believe this anymore. I feel like I'm in the wrong profession. They are waking up. They are seeing the light, but I was lucky, Natalie. Like I didn't have a husband or kids or, you know, something that kept me from jumping out of the system when I wanted to, it pulled at my heartstrings yeah. for a couple of years before I left and I was scared mm -hmm. and I know they're scared and I know they have families and they have bills and they don't know how to get out. That's why you guys see these doctors and sometimes they gaslight you and they're unhappy. They're unhappy. They're yeah. unhappy. You guys. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much. Jess. I want to just say a couple more things and ask 
where to find you. And then we're going to stay on with the community and take some questions that they might have. One just, just launched her own product line, which I'm super excited about. Um, if you go to midlifeconversations.com forward slash Aegis and you spell it A E G I S. So midlifeconversations.com forward slash A E G I S Aegis. I have her new uh, glutathione, which I think everyone should take glutathione. I'm going to have you talk, share in a, for just a second, Jess, why glutathione and why did you add specific things to it? Yes. So I have a personal story to share with this. And it tastes client. good, by the way. I don't think it tastes like eggs. I love, I'm going to have it right oh, now. Good. Okay. You know, it's people either love it. I love, or but it's, I also like cilantro. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have that gene. And there's some yeah. people, 25% of the population has a gene that makes it taste like soap. Um, yeah. Well, no, so I love well. it. And I, I actually love your glutathione. <laughs> I'm like, Perfect. oh, I get four droppers a day. <laughs> we really tried really hard to make that taste good. It kind of tastes like a sweet, smoky citrus, you guys, I think. It does. Yeah. So there's methylated B vitamins in there, all, the, all of them, glutathione and vitamin C. And when you guys look at the bottle, you notice we don't have quite as many milligrams as some of our competing companies. And that's because this product is nano and liposomal. Now, when I say nano, people freak out and they think I mean nanobots crawling on their arteries. And that's mm. not what I would ever do to you guys. That just infers the size of the particles. That's all nano means is that it's less than one micron. And then we made it liposomal, which means we emulsified it so that when you hold it here in your mouth, in the gums for 30 seconds, you absorb 100%. Which wow. You don't. Okay. I didn't do that. I didn't hold it. Mike. I didn't read instructions. So I need to do that. Yeah. So you'll absorb all of it in the, in the buccal cavity here. And when you take a pill or, or a liquid, that's not liposomal, you goes down through the gut, your hydrochloric acid chews it up and you maybe get 25% after the first pass through the liver. So we lowered the milligrams because you're getting all of it. (laughs) Yeah. So good. So, and and then by the way, Natalie, Jill, 10. She just set this up for me right now and gets you, nice. I think that gets you a discount or something, right? Is that, or I don't know if that's the coupon yeah. you guys gave me. Yep, yeah. So you get a discount. You get a little discount. Natalie Jill 10, if you go there, um, Jeff loved having you. If you, uh, we're going to open up to questions in just a minute. I'm going to end the podcast and my membership can ask if you want to join the after party after some of my podcast episodes, I record them live in my group. And then the after party happens, which means members can ask questions of the guests. If you're interested in that, go to join dot midlifeconversations.com. Again, it's join.midlifeconversations.com. Uh, I'll link everything in the show notes, show notes. Jess, where are you most active? Where do you want people to go find you? You know, I'm really active on wellness plus I'm really active on Instagram. And so I always tell people there's kind of a hierarchy to it working or following me. You can follow me for free. I love to get free information online and teach people. But if you really want kind of the creme de la creme, the, the secret sauce where the root cause and answers are, it's on wellness plus. Awesome. And we're going to link all that up in the show notes to find you. Thank you so much. Just stay on for a minute for the, for the group. And uh, thank you so much. 